Okay, so the final group in the four chamber view is the septal defects and the crux of the heart. And I'm mostly going to focus on the AV septal defect. And I will also show you uh, CCTGA four chamber view because it's very deceptively looks very normal. So this is an example of a complete AV septal defect. When you look at the center portion of the heart, you can make out the defect. So let us see what are the components of the complete AV septal defect. The first is that there is a large defect in the crux of the heart there. And this is a frame where the valves are open. It's a diastolic frame. And you see a large defect in the crux of the heart with the valves open. So that is the first clue. So it is as if uh, there is a hole, the entire central portion of the heart where the atrial and the ventricular septum meet, it's punched out. The second feature, normally we know that when you insist to leave and the valves are closed, there is a normal phenomenon called offsetting, where the tricuspid valve is at a lower level compared to the mitral valve. In AV septal defect, there is a linear insertion of the atrioventricular valves, and there is complete loss of offsetting. The third feature is that the atrioventricular length ratio. Normally, the ventricular length will be more than the atrial length. While in AV septal defect, there is a downward displacement of the valves, so the ventricular AV length ratio will be increased. That's the third feature. And the fourth feature is when you put color, you find a single channel of blood flow into the ventricles. If once instead of two separate uh, channels of color flow, you see a single channel blood flow. And as we can see in this movie, you can also make out some atrioventricular valve regurgitation. So the two important uh, imaging points for AV septal defect are in diastolic frame, you find a large defect in the center of the heart, the crux of the heart. And in the systolic frame, you see the loss of offsetage or the linear insertion. Now, the, the entity which I showed you was what is called a balanced type of AV septal defect, where the two ventricles were equal sized. Now, look at this type of AV septal defect. Here, you see that the valve is predominantly opening into the right ventricle, which is a large ventricle while the ventricle on the left side is really small. So this should not be termed as hypoplastic left heart syndrome. That's wrong. This should be termed as unbalanced type of AV septal defect with a small LV. This is not left heart hypoplasia. And if you write it, it you in, in anatomical sense, you, are, you may be okay. You are seeing a small LV, but that is not a correct diagnosis. So please do not label this condition as hypoplastic left heart syndrome. I have seen several reports where an unbalanced AVSD is reported as hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So it's a wrong terminology. So the correct terminology is unbalanced type of atrial septal defect with small LV. This is often a part of an entity called right isomerism, which is we see. Now this is another type of AV septal defect. So you see two good sized ventricles, but you see how slow the heart rate is. So this is typically the type of AV septal defect which is found in left isomerism. Often has associated with complete heart block. See here on the other picture, you see here a very interesting finding. You see two vessels instead of one where the descending iota is. This is called a double vessel sign. One of this is the iota and the second is a dilated as they goes away. And this is because the inferior vena cava is interrupted here. So this is the hallmark of what is called left isomerism. So a very deceptive looking picture looks like AV septal defect, but you have this double vessel sign. Immediately you uh, diagnose left isomerism or heterotaxy. So unbalanced AV septal defect and uh, the uh, AV septal defect with double vessel sign or bradycardia is a part of a heterotaxy type syndrome. The prognostic importance is that these entities are not associated with Down syndrome. So you don't need to do a karyotyping for this uh, condition. However, a balanced AV septal defect is, uh, has a 50% association with trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. So that is where you would do a uh, amniocentesis and karyotyping. So it's very important to distinguish between 
AV septal defect occurring in different settings. So I'm not showing the full uh, cases, all the pictures, because I don't like to do that. Because I try to stay stick to the uh, topic which we are discussing, which is AV septal defect. So please distinguish between the AV septal defect, which you find in trisomy 21, which is a balanced AV septal defect with equal size ventricles, versus the AV septal defect, which is seen in isomeric hearts or heterotaxy, in which either you get an unbalanced AV septal defect or you get a picture like this where you have the interrupted IVC with AV septal defect as shown by the double vessel sign. Now, this is reverse offsetting. So, in normally you have the tricuspid valve at the lower level. In reverse offsetting, what happens is everything looks same, but the left-sided valve will be the lower insertion. So that is what's shown here. So, normally the right-sided valve has a lower insertion, but here the left-sided valve, that is at the lower insertion. But this is a tricuspid valve because we can see that the right ventricle is indeed there. The moderator band, as shown by the red uh, circle, is there on the left side in CCTGA, where a normal it is on the right side. So, in CCTGA, what happens is that there is atrioventricular discordance. The pulmonary veins drain to the left atrium, as we can see by the arrows. However, the left atrium will be connecting to the right sided ventricle. So, that left AV valve inserts the lower level. The right atrium connects to the left sided ventricle and hence the right sided AV valve inserts at a higher level. So that is how you distinguish a normal four chamber view from the reverse offsetting in CCTG.